Um, so what we are going to be discussing this week again is going back to your two-week plan, and we're actually going to cover a couple of different components um, within this quick uh, 12 to 15 minute video. So let's start by looking again at your syllabus. And scroll up towards those components again of the two-week plan. So today what we're going to be looking at is um, C um, and D, and maybe a little bit even of E, which will actually be you know, the, the rest of your, um, of your, your plan. I mean, that would be almost everything, I, I believe, um, the major components. We, we might not get much into detailed lesson plans. I'm going to show you a couple of ideas around templates, um, but I think I might save the majority of that for, for next week. I'm um, definitely going to look at routine and schedule, and within that, those those um, instruction instructional structures. Um, it's a bit of a mouthful, instructional structures. Um, so let's start with um, the idea of the the routine or schedule. So I have this overview of a day's reading or writing workshop. Um, this is from um, units of study. Um, uh, talking about like Lucy Calkins, basically the queen of workshop. She's definitely not the only person who has done a way of workshop. Hers is not the only way, um, definitely not. And I've tweaked a lot um, in classrooms and as a coach of, uh, you know, of what I've done with Lucy's stuff. So it's not saying that it has to be this way. Um, but this is just one example of um, a way that you can think about that, that routine. Um, so if we're going back again to the routine or schedule, describe how your literacy events will be distributed across the curriculum, include specific times and engagement. Um, so what I would hope, at least what would definitely be components within everybody's um, part of this is mini lesson, your, your independent um, work time, which should include some small group and conferring, um, and then... Um, you could include, you know, share time. We haven't really talked much about that. Um, it's just a you know, time for students to get up and celebrate. But I definitely would want to see the, the components of a workshop, um, mini lesson, the independent time um, for work. And while those kids are independently working, typically on reading, what are you doing during that time? Um, and then the, the share part of your lessons. So that those need to be there. Um, the times on these, there's there's some wiggle room. And again, maybe in your um, clinical experience, you know, your teacher might not have all of these or um, your teacher might um, have a little bit more time in one and a little bit less time in, in the other. These are just some guidelines. These are guideposts. Think of them that way. Um, and there's some flexibility around them, um, but you don't want your mini lesson to be 30 minutes or then it's not mini anymore. Um, so don't think that if you put... 15 minutes for your mini lesson within your two-week plan that I'm going to dock you points. But that is not what, what this is all about. Um, it's just more about thinking about balance. How much, and you know, we keep going back to who's doing the work, how much of your reading workshop time is you doing the heavy lifting and how much of it is the kiddos doing the work? Um, that's the good question for you to keep in mind when you're thinking about timing. So with this mini lesson, less than 10 minutes, I find it really hard to do that. <laughs> I'm a talker. Um, even if I set a timer, it's really, really hard for me to keep a mini lesson less than 10 minutes. But at the same time, I think, but these kiddos, how hard is it, you know, to have to sit and listen to someone, you know, speak about something. 10 minutes is, is a pretty good, you know, chunk of time. And for the brain, um, typically between seven and 10 minutes, the brain needs a break to reflect on, absorb, integrate whatever it just learned. Um, so thinking around that, not a lot of time. Um, you know what the logistics are. Um, for this week, I've added a couple of videos of some mini lessons. I know we've seen a couple here and there within our course, but these are specifically geared just towards the mini lesson. Um, and, the, you know, a mini lesson can be, you know, a, a place where you can have, you know, an interactive read aloud. So you're including that structure. If we think about those instructional structures, right? Reading aloud, shared reading, independent reading with conferences and small groups. You're going to describe how you use these structures um, and how you're going to use them, you know, instructionally. A mini lesson can be a place where you have 
a shared reading lesson. Or a mini lesson can be where you have an interactive read aloud, and you'll see that in the uh, one of the videos for this week. So just keep in mind they don't have to be um, separated into silos. So where when you show your routine um, and instructional um, breakdown of time, that that means that then somewhere separate you need to put, um, you know, shared reading and, and those parts. They can kind of flow within one another. Um, this example shows what the teacher is doing during that time and what the students are doing during that time, um, which is, you know, very general just to what, you know, a typical workshop would, would be. You do not have to have this part of teacher and students. That's going to be um, expected within your lesson plans. Um, but, but just thinking about the components and the amount of time um, that you can see the large chunk of time between 35 and 45 minutes is that the kids working, the independent reading time, you're conferring or pulling small groups together. Um, so the students find the, the places that they're gonna read for reading workshop and, and these are the things you're doing during this time. Um, some one-on-one -on -one or small group teaching. Those small groups can be guided reading or they can be book clubs or you, know, you might spend more time conferring than you will small groups. Um, some some uh, teachers add a mid-workshop teaching point. And, and what they do is they, they either remind the students of what the mini lesson um, was, because you know, after a mini lesson, you're sending the students off to, to do what they can independently with what you just showed them in the mini lesson, right? It's a send off. Or it might be just a little reminder about their, their habits and how they're doing, just a way again for the brain to kind of pause, reflect, and refocus. Some teachers really love the mid-workshop teaching uh, point. I depended on the kiddos that I was working with. If I had a group of students who, man, once they got into it, they were in it, I didn't want to interrupt them. You know, it's like a, if I have a group of like obviously engaged kids, I am not going to stop them just to be like, hey kids, don't forget, here's what the mini lesson was, don't forget about these habits. You know, it's like, it's like it jars the brain out of the engaged reading habits that it was in. While with other groups of kids, they needed that reminder. Um, so it really depends. That's why I say, you know, that's not something you absolutely have to have. Um, and then, you know, the share time, you know, a lot of times this is for teachers' best intentions cut out because you, know, you run out of time or you know, something else comes up or, oh, I just have to get this one last conference in, you know, we can skip share time. Um, but it is an important piece to keep in there because, remember, reading workshop is very much strength-focused. Um, let's celebrate. What are you doing well? Um, I've had, you know, teachers do it traditionally, gathering all the students back together, just like they did for the mini lesson. And let's, you know, talk about, you know, three students who celebrate the work that they did that day. I've had other teachers who have integrated sharing um, into their uh, small group or they're conferring. So uh, as they're conferring with a the child, they're saying, you know, I, I would love for you to share what we talked about today, what you showed. Or um, within the small group, they share and, and reflect within that small group. So the teacher feels like, well, I still get sharing in. They're still sharing the, the work they did. They're just doing it in a smaller group. So again, there's some flexibility um, within that too. I will include this picture within your files for this week um, and, and within the, the reading tab for week 10. So you can look at it. But again, please don't feel like this is me saying your mini lesson had better be less than 10 minutes. Again, it's all about balance and thinking about how much time you are working versus how much time our kiddos working. Um, the other thing I wanted to speak about um, within uh, this video is mini lessons. And I know we haven't talked a lot about them, and there's a reason why. Um, method to my madness, I promise, is that um, I feel like a lot of the times when people learn about workshops, they start with the mini lesson because it's the first thing, right? Um, which I think is, is, is all well and good. However, um, the very short reading that you have for this week by Sandra Wilde, again from Ms. Q Analysis, talks about the idea of growing mini lessons from miscues, which I absolutely adore that idea. Because again, it goes back to that theme of we are teaching children. And our children are informing our instruction. So while I love Lucy Calkins' work, I love her units of study, uh, you know, Daily Five is fantastic. There's lots of good structures and programs out there, but none of them, and I believe Lucy Calkins would agree with me, none of them supersede the needs that you see as a teacher with a select group of students. 
So even if a curriculum says, hey, it's week five, this is what, you know, are, are some mini lessons you could teach around reading. I think those are great to have in your back pocket as something that, hey, I can pull that out and see like if it, if it fits what my kids need as a whole. But if you're starting to see a theme or a pattern of miscues with your kiddos, why not make that your mini lesson? And I think Sandra Wild does an excellent job of explaining that um, in your reading for this week. So that's why we didn't start with mini lessons, because I feel like you first need to learn about, well, what's the reading process? Um, how do I know what a kid's reading process is? What are um, some of the structures, right, that I can use within this classroom, even within a mini lesson? And then um, what are kids doing independently, right? All these very important parts. And then like the mini lesson is like just kind of the icing on the cake. It is not the be all end all of your instruction. It is not the most important part of your reading instruction. Um, and I just really like the idea of it coming kind of towards the end because it's like you look at everything else, all of your kiddos' needs, how they're reading, um, what themes you're seeing within their miscue analyses um, and things like that. And then, of course, your you know, state standards, and you use that to craft your mini lessons. So making it something that's very much a, um, a, a reaction to what you're seeing, uh, you know, in your classroom, I feel like is really important for many of us. Um, so that's why we waited to the very end to talk about them. So knowing that, not saying that mini lessons are not important, but they are definitely not the most important part of, of your um, weekly lesson plans, which we will look at a lot more closely next week. Um, but within um, your uh, files, I am going to give you a little bit of food for thought. I'm going to show you some choice boards that some teachers have used for reading workshop, where that's basically their lesson plan, but it's something that kids can access and utilize. Um, I am gonna give you some traditional weekly lesson plan templates to look at um, in your files for this week as well. Um, and, but, but you know, again, I'm not gonna really dive deeply into what the two weeks can look like until um, next week, until week 11. This week, I really want you to you know, focus on mini lessons, thinking about how you could grow those from miscues. Um, and I want you to think about, um, there was something else which I was thinking about. Oh, that's right. Um, that when you're uh, talking about um, lesson plans that we're mostly going to, going to be thinking about that structure that I just showed you, showing you, um, we're gonna think about planning for many lessons, we're going to plan for what the independent reading activities are going to be, hint, hint, mostly just reading, um, you know, no worksheet, or, you know, think about those ideas of tasks with scope. Um, and then um, having some lesson plans around some small group work. What could a guided reading lesson plan look like? Um, and then how often are you going to be conferring versus small group work? And again, we'll get more into that um, next week. So this week, um, looking back at your syllabus, take the time to uh, look at your uh, cooperating teacher's routine or schedule for literacy, um, hoping that they have a reading workshop model. If they don't, try to, you know, think about what, what you've learned in this class and what you're gaining from your clinical and piece the two together. Um, work on, you know, so you can have like the actual schedule written out with the times and then do a, you know, a synopsis or a summary of what you're showing me with those times and engagement. Um, and then work on, on your instructional structures piece this week as well. Um, just think about, you know, how are you, describe each one of these and what you've learned about them within this course. And then think about how often you're going to use them. Are you going to read aloud every day or three days a week? Are you going to have shared reading as a mini lesson twice a week? You know, think about, make those kinds of decisions of how often you're going to use um, those different structures. Um, and then the other part of that is explaining how you will differentiate instruction and how you use data to do so. That piece is mostly for the small group in reading with confer reading conferences as well. Um, not so much with reading aloud, not so much with shared reading, since we know those are large group and uh, not going to be able to differentiate as much in those. All right, as always, let me know if you have questions, um, and I will see you all next time.